Congratulations. So you've got the keys to your home. After a long road of viewings with your agent, setting up mortgage broker meetings, dealing with your lawyer for signing closing documents, and scheduling in movers, the big day has finally arrived. And as the excitement begins to set in, you take your first walk through the property as a new homeowner. You take a big sigh of relief that there's absolutely nothing wrong with the property and <laughs> is that a massive hole in the wall? I'm pretty sure the bathtub shouldn't be leaking water. Where the hell is the stove? In today's video, I'll be covering the topic of discovering defects following the closing of a home. From the buyer's perspective, it's important to understand the remedies available to you when you discover a defective issue with the home and also understanding your limitations at law. From a seller's point of view, this video will discuss your obligations to disclose items for a home and the best ways to limit your liability in case a defective item may crop up post-closing. Hey guys, if you're new to this channel, my name is Chris Chu and I'm a real estate lawyer here in Toronto. And on this channel, I'll be going over some important information, insights and tips about real estate law here in Ontario so that you can feel better prepared for your next real estate transaction. So before I begin, I'm obligated by the Law Society of Ontario to let you know that the content made available on this channel is for informational purposes only. It is not, nor is it intended to replace legal advice and does not constitute a lawyer-client relationship. So let's start off with what's considered a defect. At law, defects are broadly organized into two categories, patent defects and latent defects. Patent defects are those defects which are discoverable by the buyer, their home inspector, or their agent. Common examples of patent defects would be major cracks or holes in the wall or ceiling, missing light fixtures or appliances, or damaged items such as broken windows or flooring. Now the key component here though, is that the buyer is the one who has to note and discover these defects and report them to the seller before closing to have them either dealt with or waived. Latent defects on the other hand are issues that can't be easily discovered by the buyer and the representatives. Common examples of latent defects are plumbing issues, electrical wiring, foundational or structural problems, and infestations. In these cases, the seller must disclose these defects to the buyer right at the outset of the transaction, ideally at the listing stage, or if the seller discovers these items before closing, they must tell the other side right away. So let's talk about the rights and obligations of both buyers and sellers when it comes to patent defects. Now for buyers, the most important thing to do is to ensure that you're given enough time to do more than one walk through the property with your real estate agent. You'll wanna test the appliances, the faucets, the lights at a bare minimum. If you see any items that are concerning, make sure you have a written record of them and snap a few pictures to keep as a record so that you can send them to your real estate agent and your lawyer ahead of closing. Now, especially if you're at the offer stage, it's important to have these items looked at right away and noted in the agreement of purchase and sale. Depending on your risk tolerance, some things may be waived, especially if you're doing a teardown or major renos on the property, while other non-negotiables should be put into the agreement of purchase and sale right away and noted as items that must be repaired prior to closing. Now, as an important side note, when it comes to this competitive market that we live in, most people don't have the time or willingness to spend on a home inspector. And while I understand that buyers are in a tough position competing against other bidders, I'd stress that it's kind of important to hire a home inspector since you never know what you may have missed that might come up to, well, bite you in the ass. If something is noted as a patent defect, for example, if the ceiling fan is broken or if there's a massive hole in the living room, if these items aren't fixed at closing as agreed to, the buyer has generally two forms of recourse subject to their lawyers battling it out. So the first option is to have an agreeable amount of money held back at closing or have the seller pay an additional amount of money for the buyer to fix the problem on their own. The second, and obviously the more tedious option, is to sue the seller after closing for the cost of fixing whatever defect it is. That's a discussion that you need to have with your lawyer to weigh the costs and benefits of the situation if it arises. That said, I'd say suing someone can be pretty expensive and a drawn out process. So the damages need to be high enough to justify hiring a lawyer and going through the mental stress of going to court. On the seller side of things, Patent defects are the buyer's responsibility. The buyer should be the one who's diligent to look at the property and notify you of any of their concerns. That said, sellers can't intentionally hide or conceal defects or prevent the buyer from discovering them. No, you can't put a rug over a huge hole in the ground or prevent the buyer from looking into certain rooms or visiting the property. If there's something that the buyer has noted and the seller agrees to fix, the issue is pretty straightforward. Being too busy or downright lazy to fix an item that you've agreed to not only is pretty shady, 
but it'll open you up to a bunch of litigation. Additionally, if you make a patent defect after the buyers have had an opportunity to inspect the home, it's your job to let them know about it. For example, if the buyer has used up their scheduled home visits and you've made a huge hole in the wall while moving out, you can't just simply say, well, you didn't discover it, so too bad. As the seller, you can't rely on the fact that buyer didn't discover it. They never had an opportunity to. They used up all their home visits. That's just cheating. Before we get into the details about latent defects, if you're getting value from this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for some more awesome content. Now, let's talk about latent defects. Latent defects follow a slightly different approach for the rights and responsibilities for both buyers and sellers. Buyers can't easily discover issues such as electrical wiring, plumbing, or structural problems without additional specialists. That means as soon as an item is discovered, apart from fixing the problem, they have up to two years from the date of discovery of the latent defect to pursue the seller for damages. Now in practice, the major key that a buyer must show is that the seller knew about the defect, but chose not to disclose it to the buyer at the time of closing. Proving this can be somewhat difficult, but specialized reports that usually come with fixing the problem itself can be available to help you prove that point. Sellers must disclose any latent defects prior to close, and if they discover a latent defect that they forgot about, they should probably disclose it right away after closing. The main thing to keep in mind is that homeowners that do their own repairs are probably some of the people that are most at risk when selling a property. If you think that you're the best amateur repairman or you're too cheap to call a professional, be prepared to list out all the problems ahead of time so that you can limit any potential liability that exists. So when it comes to defects generally from a buyer and seller's perspective, I think it's important to stress that being reasonable is the most important part of the process. Buyers for the most part should understand that buying a home from a seller is like really buying an expensive classic car. Someone has lived in that property before. That means that you can expect some nicks and bumps and some scratches so long as those items aren't essential to you living in that property or make it unlivable. Now on the seller side, I think it's really important to mention that what you think isn't that important may be super important to someone else. Let's say for example, you don't really care if the ceiling fan is broken or if the electrical work isn't all that great. Well, it might be unacceptable to someone else. In all instances, I think meeting each other in the middle and making arrangements to accommodate one another is an important first step in mitigating legal risk and fallout. So guys, there it is. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, if you're looking to speak with a lawyer individually for a personal matter, make sure to get in contact with me to set up an appointment via my law firm's website, which I've linked in the description below. And if you found this video interesting and hope to tune in for more, hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon.